happy monday march 25th 2024 welcome to another episode of strange days live i am your host doc coming to you from southern california on this beautiful monday night how is everybody doing i hope you guys are doing well i've been doing well myself played hooky from work today wasn't feeling it really good this week. I had some, a little bit of a cough. It's kind of those late winter, early spring coughs, as you all know. You probably all get them as well. But nonetheless, I'm doing better now. So I just finished doing the English version, excuse me, the Spanish version of the podcast. And uh, I'm coming back to the fold, if you will, <laughs> to the OGs. So I wish that um, you got, all of you guys are doing well. And um, today we'll be having a, oh, sorry about that. Uh, we have a good show today. Uh, we have a show that's going to be about people who have faked their own demise for various of strange and weird reasons. And um, yeah, so <clears throat> I'm sure you guys have heard of like the, you know, the, the, the Tupacs or the Elvis or even Hitler, who's been, uh, people have said that he's, he's, he faked his own demise. But uh, there's also other people, and um, whether to be literature, or whether to be um, financial or political uh, backgrounds that have had, uh, that have been that faked their own demises for a myriad of reasons, and uh, strange as it may be. So yeah, um, welcome to the show. Let me just want to make sure that everything is doing well in regards to it's transmitting everything well. Good. So the hour for um, this particular show will be from nine to ten, and the Spanish show will be from eight to nine for the time being. As you guys know me, uh, shows, the show will change based on um, you know based on the supply and demand kind of what's in more demand but um fear not okay so yeah <clears throat> welcome to the show today i had a bunch of listeners unfortunately that came in from the english side of things if you will earlier on today so i hope i don't i don't uh, i don't miss them but welcome i'm just going to give a little bit more time for everybody to get settled in today to see what's going on now, I usually, um, I'll, I'll give it a few, I usually don't go through the news, but um, a lot of weird things happen today. The whole thing with uh, P. Diddy or Puff Daddy getting uh, his homes raided due to some accusations. Uh, yeah. He actually says here, was he was he actually arrested? I think he was arrested. Finally, justice. I think this. Um, I think that this will be the year that uh, as someone used to say the swamp will be sort of cleaned up a little bit from all the craziness. There's a lot of people that have that have on the vanguard, if you will, in regards to getting all these sick evil people, uh, some justice. And so, I mean, there's the, the writings on the, the writings on the, on the wall, if you say, for all the atrocities and all the accusations that uh, this, this guy has been uh, accused of. This is Diddy of trafficking and doing disgusting things. So, <clears throat> Hopefully, this will be a, a year that the swamp get finally cleaned up of all this disgusting mess. Anyway, so today's topic is people who have faked their own death, their own demise. So, you know, some people, obviously, they've had different motivations. You know, they 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 maybe self-promotion, kind of weird well, kind of self-promote yourself. A, a prank, there's some cases about people in order to get out of abusive relationships, in order to get uh, away from money problems, and uh, sometimes in order to get away from a certain established 
life of royalty or maybe um, fervor, if you will. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. First case I want to discuss is, is of a very famous um, rabbi, Mr. Uh, Johann Ben Zakai, who actually lived in the first century, and I'm sure he probably cost cross path with Christ, with Jesus. He lived from uh, 1 to the year 80. And basically, he was a um, well-known Jewish sage during the late Second Temple period. And um, he was also involved or around for the post-destructive era, as you know, the Second Temple in Jerusalem was under destruction um, of of, uh, of the Romans. I think it was in AD 70, the year 70, and um, it was carried out by the Romans. And so this uh, Rabbi Johann Banzaki basically faked his demise to, in order to escape the, the Roman army. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I mean, it was something uh, legitimate, right? You don't want to become a, a martyr of sorts. So he did this in, uh, I think it was AD 73, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Then we move into the 14th century. There was a lady by the name of Joan of Leeds, who was, uh, a, she was an English nun. And um, I'm just laughing because I know the story, but she was bored basically with her monastic and enclosed life of a, of a nun. And at some point in the year 1318, she exca escaped from uh, St. Clement's, where she was stationed, by York, to journey to Beverly, which is um, another part of uh, a town located in a different locality in England, where she was accused of living with a man. Now, this is the part that's interesting in regards to the case of Joan of Leeds. She was assisted uh, by some of her friend nuns uh, to escape. She faked a mortal illness and constructed a dummy of herself, which her colleagues buried in holy ground. Now, when the Archbishop of York, Mr. William Melton, heard about this, he wrote a letter to the religious authorities in Beverly, expanding upon Joan's faults and instructing that she be returned forthwith to St. Clement's. It is not recorded whether she ever did return. And all that, are, that is known about her life and career actually comes from three letters found in Melton's Archiepiscopal <laughs> Cartulary. Uh, which is a, basically a cartulary, a medieval manuscript, a volume or a roll that contains, you know, letters and scrolls and what have you. So, yeah, so Joan of Leeds got tired being a nun and she escaped and she pulled out a stunt with all the help of her little friends. So I think it was, a, I think it's a kind of a cool story. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now you have like an 18th century too. Uh, there's a, there was a man by the name of George Grzynski, who was a Russian nobleman, and he actually faked his demise in 1798. Now this guy did it in order to avoid a core sentence. And uh, smartly enough, he reappeared when he was effectively pardoned in 1902. And he went on to live for 50 more years. So very, very smart dude. Now you guys are familiar with Aleister Crowley, right? If you guys are Ozzy Osbourne fans, remember that song, Mr. Crowley? I'm sure you guys heard that song by Ozzy. Mr. Crowley. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, what went on in your head? Oh, Mr. Crowley, when did you talk to the dead? Your lifestyle to me seems so tragic with the thread of it all. You fooled the people with magic, yet you waited on Satan's call. So, Mr. Alistair Crowley, he was a, a gentleman who lived uh, from 1875 to 1947 to the ripe old age of 72 years old. And he's, you know, mostly known for being an, uh, an occultist, uh, a poet, a novelist, and also a mountaineer. Uh, so, in a broad sense, being an occultist is basically uh, the, the category of esoteric supernatural beliefs and practices which tend to fall outside the scope of any organized religion or science, you know, such as um, 
getting yourself involved in magic and mysticism and spells and all that. But yeah, he was pretty um pretty famous guy. Now the the, the yeah, so the cool part of this story is that uh, there was a Portuguese poet named Fernando Pessoa who actually helped Alistair Crowley fake his demise in 1930, which occurred in Portugal. Alistair Crowley promptly appeared three weeks later publicly in Berlin. So it was a, a three-week route, if you will. And then he actually passed away in 1947. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so the, those are some some people that we all know. Those are... Now, if we move on to like the 21st century, we have a John Darwin, who was a former teacher, and he was actually a prison officer from uh, Hartpool, England, and he faked his own demise on the 27th of March, excuse me, 21st of March of 2020, 20, 2002, by canoeing, goodness, what's wrong with my, by canoeing out to sea, canoeing, right, canoeing, yeah, canoeing out to sea and disappearing. His rules fell apart in 2006 when a simple Google search revealed a photo of him buying a house in Panama. And Darwin and his wife, Anne, were arrested and charged with fraud, deception, and money laundering related to a life insurance, uh, insurance payout they received of about 250,000 pounds. They were each sentenced to more than six years in prison and all their property sold and all their money taken, including his pension, in order to repay for the life insurance fraud. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Crime doesn't pay. Google search. Goodness. Um, Mr. Clayton Counts was an American musician, uh, DJ, composer. He, had a, he used to play in a band called Bowl of Heaven. Yeah, this gentleman reported himself demised on his own website in 2007 as a prank. And he actually passed away in 2016, right? There was a Samuel Israel III, an American hedge fund manager who was facing 22 years in prison for financial maleficence and fraud. He left his truck in a deletion note at a bridge in an attempted fake deletion in April of 2008. Authorities suspected that his deletion was a f was fake since, among other things, passerby reported that a car had picked someone up on the bridge from the near um, abandoned car. My goodness. Two years were added to his sentence for obstruction of justice, in which he is currently serving. And these people are not too bright. They're like fake their own demise and then they'll call Uber in order for them to... Uh, to get out of uh, whatever situation they're in. Uh, Marcus Schreger, a financial manager from Fisher, Indiana, was charged with defrauding clients and in 2009 attempted to fake his own device in a plane crash. So this is more elaborate, planned to avoid persecution. The plane crash was quickly discovered to be staged and Mr. Schreckner was captured two days later after he sent an email message to a friend about his plan. And again, not too bright. In October 2010, after pleading guilty to state charges, Schreckner was sentenced to 10 years in prison and fined 600,000 plus. It's a lot, Steve Fine. American author Luke Reinhardt. Uh, let's see what kind of. He's the author of The Dice Man, published in 1971. And he has some other co uh, comic philosophical novels. Now, this gentleman uh, faked his own demise for the simple purpose of seeing how his friends would react. He actually sent an email out to 25 of his buddies on August of 2012. And um, he hoaxed and pranked all of them. And the reaction of his 20 friends, 25 friends, ranged from sorrow to gratitude <laughs> to amusement. That's that's funny. Gratitude. Can you imagine that? I was like, man, man to reply to the email with gratitude. Uh, now, this case is a little bit more disturbing. Uh, one Chandra Mohan Sharma was an Indian activist. He actually deleted a homeless man, placed the body in his own vehicle, and set set vehicle on fire. 
in an attempt at faking his own demise in 2014 to get out of his marriage. He was captured by police later that year. I mean, how bad does your marriage have to be that you would actually delete a person, burn your car in order for somebody to believe you? I mean, that's that's disgusting. <clears throat> Nikolai, uh, no, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, yeah, and this was a cool case. Uh, Arkady Babshenko is a Russian journalist who lived in Ukraine. In 2018, he faked his own uh, demise, which was widely reported in the international press. And this was actually a part of a sting operation aimed at exposing an agent sent to delete him. Babchenko appearance at a press conference the day after his announcement of his death caused an international sensation. So he saved his life by faking his death, pretty much. Pretty cool, huh? Now, there's always been conspiracy theories and also a lot of false speculations on people that are, you know, a little bit more famous, if you will. Uh, and then um, they were able to sort of try to pull uh, the evil, either they demised and then people just didn't accept it, or maybe there was some credibility in regards to them not having a past. Uh, there was a, a gentleman, he was a former prime minister of Australia. His name was Harold Holt, who disappeared uh, on the beach in 1967 with the consensus, consensus that he had actually drowned. Some, theory, some theories have emerged suggesting that he had faked his own demise for a number of reasons, but most famously that he was a Chinese spy who had been collected by a Chinese submarine and that he had feigned his drowning to run away with his mistress. Not too far-fetched, right? <clears throat> now, towards the end of the reign of Alexander I of Russia, who was an emperor of Russia from 1801 to 1825, he was uh, increasingly suspicious of those around him, and he became more religious. He said that, um, well, they said that he caught typhus fever and passed away, Russian legends claim that the Tsar actually faked his own demise and left for Siberia, where he became a hermit and took on the name of Fyodor Kuzmik. Such legends existed during Kuzmik's lifetime when Kuzmik was on his deathbed in 1876. The priest that went to his side to perform the last rites asked him indeed if he was Tsar Alexander, and Kuzmik's reply was very vague sentence but did not really answer the question. So basically a good political answer. Historians are very skeptical of the claim that Tsar Alexander I was indeed Fyodor Kuzmik. Now, um, American rapper Jared Higgins, also known as Juice World, passed away from a drug overdose at the age of 21. Many fans have speculated that his lyrics suggested that he actually expected to pass away young and that he could have faked his demise there's a particular song named Legends that he sings. What's a 27 club? We ain't making it past 21. Referring to a group of famous artists who have expired at the age of 27, mostly Kurt Cobain, A.B. Whitehouse, Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, and Jimi Hendrix. Could it be just a coincidence in his lyrics? Could be. And then we have more, um, you know, more stronger cases, if you will. They say that Adolf Hitler, actually, a lot of people believe that he faked his own demise. As you all know, he was a dictator of Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945. And um, have been speculated to have uh, faked his own demise and escaped Berlin in mid-1945, which was, you know, war was lost already by the Germans in that time. Uh, the setting of his uh, death established by Western scholars. Uh, Hitler is claimed to have utilized established escape routes <clears throat> while leaving behind misleading evidence such as his dental remains via a dentures and a broken off jawbone. I don't know if it will be his own broken. I would doubt that he would break his own jaw. Uh, as well as by, by using a, a body double. 
there was an interesting um, report that I saw a few years ago about examination of um, of his dental records, which actually, believe it or not, they're in um, they're in they're housed in Russia. <clears throat> So the, the dental remains extracted from the soil in the garden uh, were actually matched with uh, Hitler's dental records in May 1945. The dental remains were later confirmed as being Hitler's, but you know what? They could be faked. You have people, very advanced minds, uh, collect, you know, take uh, impressions of, of Hitler's teeth, uh, and they could uh, recreate a uh, dental to be exactly that's that of Hitler's. They can get teeth, they can mold them, they can, uh, you know, they can, I mean, th that's not hard to fake. So, like I said, the, the Soviet Union uh, restricted the release of information and released many conflicting reports about uh, Hitler's passing. And last I heard was that um, that his, his, his dental records were uh, seen, they were analyzed, if you will. But you could fake this. You know, there's there's def there's definitely um, ways that you can fake dental, and like I said, his dental uh, remains, his teeth are actually in in Russia somewhere. No, there's a, a YouTube video, and if you guys want to watch it, it's, it was very interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> Pretty gross. But uh, yeah, and uh, there's also some theories that are pretty credible that say that Hitler was able to escape to South America. There's documented uh, sightings both in Argentina and there's also uh, documented sightings in uh, in Brazil. In Brazil, the, the one in Brazil is particular particularly interesting because they said that he had a, he married a Brazilian lady and he actually had kids with her and there's purported photos of um, of him when he lived in uh, lived in Brazil and also there's the, the credence that he survived and that he <clears throat> that he oh, sorry guys I'm sorry that he survived and he, he, he was able to move into the western part of Argentina. Now, there's a lot of videos on, on YouTube where they actually go to these towns. So they, they were pretty secluded towns and they were pretty well um, encapsulated, if you will, by, um, by the, the German community that immigrated after World War II to Argentina. And so there's interviews with people that were either the cooks or the cleaners or the chauffeurs or the caretaker of the property, excuse me, that actually say that they, they saw him there, that they attended to him, that they were able to identify that Hitler indeed did live in Argentina. <clears throat> and there's a lot of... Um, documentation for set validity you know that this guy was able to kind of make a different life if you will which isn't you know well i think that everybody will get their just reward but uh, it's unfortunately that uh, unfortunate that he's able to escape but anyways and then the, the other case that's obviously close to home and pretty popular is the fact that uh, that Elvis Presley did not pass away in August of 77. So a lot of rumors that actually claimed, claimed that he faked his passing and he went into hiding. He was um, wanted to get involved with uh, law enforcement and also he wanted to get away from the public limelight, you know. So we can go, we can, we can have a show just about, uh, just about Elvis alone with all the supposedly all the proofs and all the video or clues that exist about him many fans have claimed <clears throat> that elvis uh, has been cited in many places around the world 
the earliest uh, known alleged sighting of Elvis after uh, his demise was announced was actually at the Memphis International Airport where a man who resembled Elvis gave the name of John Burroughs, which was the same name that Elvis actually used when booking hotels. In 1978, author Gail Brewer Giorgio published a book titled Orion, which is a novel about a fictional Presley-like singer called Orion, who in the story faked his uh, demise to escape the pressures of fame. The funny thing is that uh, you can go on YouTube and you can look for Orion if you go for, and you can see that there, there was a lot of albums made. So if you go to, if you go to YouTube and you type Orion Elvis, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that um, this guy I mean, sounds a lot, a lot, a lot like Elvis. There might be a little also, um, he wore, this guy actually wore like a face mask. And um, could have been him, maybe, or could have been a lookalike to generate sensationalism, maybe. There's also the, the there's also um, another person who is actually a pastor who people believe that he is Elvis. Elvis was a very uh, religious man, <clears throat> and um, the name of the pastor, and he's a very uh, a pastor in a small community in central Arkansas. His name is Robert Joyce, and he does a lot of singing. If you do some, if you look at um, YouTube videos, he sounds and he also looks a lot like Elvis. I mean, it's pretty uncanny. Look at Bob Joyce. Just look at Bob Joyce videos on YouTube. Now, the thing is that you can see that uh, the way that he sings, uh, a lot of people have speculated body movements. Obviously, if, if, if it's Elvis, he would have had, had to have um, a lot of plastic surgery because of the fact that um, I'm just kind of going through the rabbit hole here because I'm looking at stuff while I talk to you. He would have to have some plastic surgery, obviously, because you can't look 100% like you did. Uh, there's a cool photo here that I found that says Elvis and his friend uh, in a picture to the left. I'm going to post it. And Bob Joyce with his wife, the same lady. That's some cool stuff. I've never seen this one. I'm going to put it up right now so I can kind of talk about it because it's pretty uncanny. I mean, could it be that this lady met Elvis and took a picture with him when he was young? Of course. Yeah, that's possible. But that this guy, this Bob Joyce, actually was uh, has been uh, credited as being Elvis and happens to marry this young lady. I don't know. I'm going to put the pictures. All right, let's see here. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna put it here, the, the images, so we can go through them. So this is the first image that we were talking about. <clears throat> and that's uh, obviously Elvis on the left and Pastor Bob Joyce and his wife on the right. If you look at it, it's the same girl, the same lady. So his wife actually met Elvis in a strange coincidence. And then um, you can see Pastor Bob and Elvis are about the same height, uncanny, when compared to to the picture, to the same lady. They're about the same height. And, um, yeah, it's the same woman. Now, I just wanted to post this other photo because it's pretty, and he has, like, very striking resemblance to Elvis Presley, Pastor Bob Joyce does. I just wanted to post a picture. That's Pastor Bob Joyce there. Kind of has like a certain look, you know, that could be, and the, the, the way that, and how he sings too is pretty uh, interesting. But this photo is pretty, um, pretty cool. I like this photo. I've never seen it before. And that kind of lends a lot of credence into the fact that Bob Joyce can perhaps be Elvis. 
Can you imagine if that came out that Elvis was still alive? That would be pretty crazy. Um, so we talked about Orion. We talked about that he used the name John Burroughs. And we talked about Gail Brewer Giorgio, who was the lady that actually published the book title Orion. According to the author, Gail Brewer uh, Giorgio, her publisher inexplicably had her novel recalled from stores, which made her wonder if the real Elvis Presley faked his own demise, because why would, uh, well, a couple of things. I mean, the, if the publisher pulls the novel, it probably creates some uproar and lends more credence. So we can, oh, they can, you know, they can be like, yeah, your story is true. That's why they pulled the book. Or it can just be a marketing scheme for her to get noticed and sell more books. And she actually uh, began her own investigation and wrote another book, <laughs> The Most Incredible Elvis Presley Story Ever Told, also known as Is Elvis Alive, created by the same writer, where she claims that Elvis was faking his own death. In 2017, Elvis fans claim to have seen the singer visit his home in Graceland on his 82nd birthday. So, yeah, weird things, huh? I'm probably going to devote a whole show to uh, to this. I should. Let's see here, from Elvis Aaron, from, I mean, there's, there's documented, uh, there's a little thing here by going back to Pastor Bob Joyce is here, this is written September 15, 2015, it says, it, it, he writes, it took a long time to get my health back on track, now, nowadays I eat health foods, sleep well, have no stress or worry, God gave me another chance at life. So I went to the Holy Land on my own and came back a different guy. I am Elvis Aaron Presley. My new life name is Bob Joyce. So if he truly believes that he has a new life, then, then being a pastor, obviously, you don't want your pastor to be to, to lie. I mean, theoretically, if he claims he's not Elvis, he's not Elvis. He changed his name, changed his persona and uh, changed his mission, became somebody else. So in essence, you know, it's like asking an actor that you kind of associate, you know, you see, uh, you associate him with a certain character they play. It's just the character that he was. So he wouldn't technically be lying per se, you know, to each his own. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Horsehair. My friend Horsehair is here. He is online. Um, as are other listeners, too. I just want to say hello to everybody that's joining us today. I hope you guys like the show so far. It's about people who have staged or faked their own death. <coughs> you got to excuse me, guys, but I have a from talking all well from talking and I also fear I uh, also have some kind of been sick recently so I'm sure sorry about the the coughing I do like the deepness of the sick voice but I don't like the cough that comes along with it so horsehair comments a very serendipitous thing you mentioned there what was I referring to, my friend? Let me know. So kind of going, <clears throat> I'm kind of going a little bit more into um, into looking for other cases of people where they've kind of try to fake their own death. There was a gentleman called Gennaro Jimenez Hernandez. In 2008, Hernandez was thought to have drowned at sea while spearfishing. Turns out he, he dumped his fishing gear, rode his bike 50 miles to the airport and ran away to South America. Hernandez lived in South America for about 16 months before turning himself in and returning to a soul in Spain. Police would have found him eventually, but it's probably a good thing. Hernandez, Hernandez got bored and turned himself in. 
Um, there was a Mr. Clay Daniels in 2004. Daniels had his wife dug up the body of an elderly woman, dressed the woman in the body in Daniels' tennis shoes and baseball cap, and put the body in Daniels' car and pushed it off a cliff when the car didn't catch fire like it was supposed to. Daniels climbed down the cliff and started a fire on the passenger seat of the car. They thought they had gotten away with it, but investigators were suspicious from the beginning and soon pieced the puzzle together. The couple is in jail now, so hopefully the experience was worth it for them. I mean, come on, you got to be, dude, seriously, you're a man and you get a elderly woman. I mean, and, and you pretend to be, you can age the bones, not only that, but bone structure between male and female are completely different. And God forbid the body doesn't burn all the way through. What are you going to do when you have, uh, when they find a uh, private part, <laughs> you know, that doesn't belong to to you? Yeah, I'm telling you, these people, well, that's why they get caught, right? These people are not very smart. Not very smart at all. This is a case from July 2012 with this Ponzi scheme about to be revealed. Aubrey Lee Prince, Price, sorry, sent his clients a family uh, deletion letter in which he admitted that he had defrauded a bank and individual investors and said that he planned to delete himself by throwing himself into the uh, into the waters in Key West. The Coast Guard searched for his body but found nothing. His wife and children, though, believed that he was demised and at his family request, a judge later declared him to be deceased. But FBI agents weren't buying it. Although his letters seemed very sincere, Special Agent Ed Sutcliffe, we did not believe that he was demised for the simple reason that there was no body. After more than a year of searching for Price, the 48-year-old was arrested on December 31st, 2013, after he presented a false ID during a routine traffic stop in Brunswick, Georgia. It was later discovered that he had equipment, equipment in his home to make fake IDs and was also in possession of handguns and multiple cell phones, all used to facilitate dealing marijuana and cocaine. It was classic drug stuff, as Sutcliffe said. He was living that life. Goodness. So you fix his life, you know, to become a dealer. I'm telling you, folks. <laughs> now, going back to some of the famous people that have said to have faked their own devices, we have Butch Cassidy, you know, Butch Cassidy of um, the Western lore. According to the traditional narrative, the American train and bank robber. Butch Cassidy, the leader of the Old West gang known as the Wild Bunch, passed away in a hail of bullets in Bolivia in 1908. But rumors that the notorious bandit who was seated um, survived the gun battle and returned to the U.S. have cropped up over the years. Now, two historians are making the case that Cassidy, born Robert Leroy Parker, <laughs> in 1866, lived under an assumed name in Spokane, Washington, working as a machinist and penning his autobiography. The evidence, which many historians question, lies in a 200-page manuscript by a certain William T. Phillips entitled Bandit Invisible, the story of Butch Cassidy, and full of details about the gangster's life. Philip allegedly revealed his true identity to close friends and family members before his own personal demise in 1937. What's interesting is that also Che Guevara, the right-hand man of Castro's political upheaval in Cuba, was also um, found his demise in Bolivia. Mm -hmm. So don't mess with any Bolivians. Juan and D.B. Cooper, remember this guy, the famous skyjacker, November 24th, 1971, a man wearing a black raincoat, a dark suit, and a wraparound sunglasses took his seat on a flight departing from Porto, Porto Oregon. A takeoff, he gave a flight attendant a note starting that he had a bomb in his briefcase. And after obtaining $200,000 in a parachute from the FBI, actually he recruited three parachutes, he leaped out of the plane and into a raging thunderstorm over the Pacific Northwest. A giant manhunt and countless tips failed to uncover any traces of the mysterious hijacker, who many have assumed uh, was perished in the fall. 
although authorities continue to investigate leads, this must be an old, old article because I don't think they're doing that anymore. Uh, yeah, the Billy the Kid one is pretty pretty cool too. This is another uh, gunslinger. The legend has it that American outlaw William Bonney, better known as Billy the Kid, was uh, gunned down by Pat Garrett, a New Mexico sheriff, in July of 1881. But over the years, many people have suggested that Garrett shot the wrong man and then covered up his error. Meanwhile, at least two individuals, one Ollie Brushy Bill Roberts of Texas in 1949 and a John Miller of Arizona in 1938, both swore up and down to friends and family that they were indeed the famous gunsling one, Billy the Kid. 2004 researchers petitioned to exhumate the remains of Billy the Kid's mother and Billy the Kid, compared their DNA to that of the body, uh, well, they petitioned to exhume the, the remains of Billy the Kid's mom and compare her DNA to that of the body buried in his gravestone. The request was not granted, so they wanted to know indeed if the person that's that's uh, buried in Billy the Kid uh, grave is actually Billy the Kid, but it was it wasn't granted. <clears throat> Louis seventeenth uh, of France, the son of Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette. Louis the Seventeenth became king of France, at least in the eyes of his royalist supporters. After his parents were executed during the French Revolution, in prison under miserable condition in Paris medieval temple prison, he reportedly passed away there after a long struggle with tuberculosis on June the eighth, seventeen ninety-five, at the age of ten. Speculation immediately began that sympathizers had smuggled out the young heir leaving a commoner in his place. When France's monarchy was restored in 1815, dozens of lost dolphins claimants came forward, including a Wisconsin missionary and a German clockmaker. In 2004, DNA testing indicated that a heart removed from the body of the boy who passed away in prison in 1795 was almost certainly that of Louis the Seventeenth. You remember the the movie Man on the Moon uh, with um, Jim Carrey? He portrayed a uh, comedian Andy Kaufman. He was uh, Andy Kaufman was famous for playing Latka Gravas on the sitcom Taxi and for staging elaborate stunts. Uh, comedian and actor Andy Kaufman passed away of lung cancer on May 16th, 18, uh, 1984. At the age, <clears throat> at the young age of 35, wow, he's super young. He'd be 75 years old today. Because of his penchant for hoaxes and his decision to actually keep his illness under wraps while he was undergoing cancer, many of Cosman fans actually believe that he had staged his own demise. His friend and writing partner, Bob Smuda, revealed that Kaufman had frequently discussed pulling such a prank during his lifetime. Though sightings of the entertainer have been reported in recent years, it is not widely accepted that he did pass away when he did. Uh, Jesse James of uh, Western fame, the infamous American outlaw, he spent most of his 34 years attacking Union soldiers, holding up banks and robbing trains with his fellow gangsters. His life of crime ended on April 3rd of 18. 82, when one of his collaborators, Bob Ford, shot him in the back to collect a reward on his head. Since then, though, it has been suggested that Ford deleted another man and allowed his one-time friend to escape, though a 1995 DNA analysis of James' purported remains suggests otherwise. So, yeah, they were able to prove that he indeed passed. Princess Anastasia of Russia who was actually the youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II. She was uh, deleted with the rest of her family family by the Bolsheviks' captors on July 16th of 1918. Those stories spread throughout Europe that the 17-year-old had survived the carnage. A series of women emerged claiming to be the missing Grand Duchess, most famously the German-born Anna Anderson, who passed away in Charlottesville, Virginia, in 1984. A decade later, DNA analysis established that Anderson was not a member of the ousted royal family. Rumors persisted until Russian scientists uncovered and positively identified Anastasia's remain in 2007. Back in the, 
back in the 80 uh, in the early 2000s 1999 2000 i used to work at a company that um kind of was on the vanguard of making websites you know this was before you can kind of click and make your own websites how they have it now back then you had to it was more elaborate you had to code and you had to do all kinds of fun stuff with with the with html we had a client that um that that came in with uh, both her daughter and her son and they claimed that they were the romanovs um very weird very odd uh, because um all three of them kind of believe the tale you know i i can be, uh, I can, um, one second, I can believe if like the kids brought mom, okay, if the kids brought mom in because mom wanted to get a, a website to prove that she was indeed part of the Romanov family, but all of the people involved in that particular website, they all believe that they were the Romanovs, and um, trying to look at the I remember the, the name of the website was called Romanov Family 2000. I'm going to see if that, I mean, I, 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 doubt, I highly doubt it. There's nothing there anymore. But if you go to the, yeah, Romanov Family 2000. If you go to the Wayback Machine, if you type Wayback Machine on your browser and you, in the, er, the URL, you, you, you type Romanov Family, Romanov Family 2000.com. Uh, it takes you to the snapshots, and the latest one was actually 2012. So, 12 years ago was the last. These people, they they still had their claim. But wouldn't it be a trip if they were really, or well, if they were really part of the Romanovs? We couldn't figure for the life of us. We were like, okay, so if the mom thinks that she's a Romanov, how, how do you explain like the both of the kids believing? And they were like very, very honest about them believing that they were part of this family. I mean, even if your parents like brainwashed you since you were little about believing something, do you, at one point in time, I guess you would probably believe it that it's not you, you know? I don't know, unless, they had some pathology though, because the way that they acted, all, all three of them was very odd. So they could have had some kind of like uh, deficiency, if you will. <laughs> Excuse me. That lends credence to the fact that <clears throat> maybe there weren't uh, <clears throat> the hundred percent. Yeah, here's the picture. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> yeah, if you go to uh, this is from two thousand and five. They were still up. I remember this family very distinctly. <clears throat> You have um you go to the Wayback Machine. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm sick. <clears throat> so the website says on July 8th, 2000, the Lawlor family were brutalized by the LA Air Export Police, Beverly Hills Police, the Delta Airlines, the UCLA Harbor General Hospital. We were headed to Russia for the second time this summer. It has come to my attention, to our attention, that my father is sequestered in the area 51 years was Alexei, Alexei Romanov, the son of the massacred Romanov family. <clears throat> and um, yeah, okay. So then I guess the, the, the lady that was there, the one that made, um, the lady that made the website believe that her father was the son of the Romanovs. And then uh, it's funny, but she has pictures with a lot of famous people. She had a picture with her and uh, Larry King she has a picture with Ru Rudy Giuliani in 2020, 2001, and with California Governor Candidate Bill Simmons, and she looks very royal. So who knows? I mean, but I, you know, I'm sure everybody met their demise in that particular thing, and she was actually running for. Says here that she wanted to run for governor I wonder what happened to this lady it was weird but yeah you can see the website Romanov family 2000 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so she look at a. <clears throat> She passed away actually, and um, she was born in 1942, and she passed away uh, 3rd of July of 2012. So God rest her soul. She was a sweet lady. Yeah, just looked did a little look up on her. But yeah, she was um, she was pretty convinced. She's buried in Vegas. Yeah, she's pretty convinced that that she was who she, that she was who she said she was. So interesting stuff, huh? Yeah, so um, I think that's pretty much it for all the cases of these people that have claimed to have, or actually who staged and faked their own demise. I'll have something interesting tomorrow for y'all. And um, I just... Uh, Thank you guys for for being faithful listeners. We're doing really good with the with the rebroadcast. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of many many live views, but I have a lot, bunch of views that come in after the fact, and I'm very appreciative for that. And I just thank you guys. I just please continue to promote the show with your friends. I just promote it uh, maybe in your social media. That would help a lot. And subscribe. You can go to strangedayslive.com and you can find all our social media links. I'm pretty active on, on Facebook and here, obviously. <clears throat> so I thank you guys for much more people coming in. If you guys want to ask any questions in the comment section, maybe I, I'll stay a little bit more. But um, <clears throat> in regards to in regards to discussing more of these cases, I think I'm pretty done for the name. I'm, my voice needs a little bit of rest. So if you're online, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. I'll give you guys about a minute or so. If I don't see much activity, I'll just see you guys tomorrow at 9 p.m. Uh, California time. No takers? Okay, well... All right, guys. Well, God bless you. Oh, hey, we got to come in here. Okay, got one horse hair. Okay, what is it? Shoot, horse hair. Give me a, a comment you got. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you got a comment, post here. The glam rocker back in 1970s. Okay. A glam rocker back in the 70s. David Bowie. Some fan, Van Haler could have gone. I don't know if they will call them glam rockers, but stage himself getting uh, getting shot during a performance. Oh, I didn't know that. Who was this guy? Publicity stunt? Yeah, I'm sure. God will generate. It can either go both ways because. If you if you do the wrong if you do the wrong approach in a publicity stunt, you'll get you know you, you you're done. Like do you remember Balloon Boy? Supposedly this family that uh, they said that their son had climbed upon some kind of balloon structure that they had built, and uh, it was all over the news. Like people were following this balloon, thinking that there was a little kid inside of the balloon, and then it turns out that the kid was hiding in the basement of the family's home. And they finally found them, and he was safe and sound. And then when they were when they were interviewing the family, right live on TV, the kid says, "Yeah, Dad, you told me to go hide." So then it was found that Balloon Boy was faked. That's when I lost I lost faith in humanity when Balloon Boy. When I found that the Balloon Boy was faked, I lost faith in all humanity. Um. Yeah, see this guy, the guy, this guy who claimed to get a glum, right? Yeah, he ended his career. Yeah, same like Balloon Boy. <clears throat> Maybe a horse hair. We, uh, you start a. You, why don't you start a glam band and we'll call it uh, Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy. That would be a cool name for a glam band. Glam band coming to Irish Irish pubs summer of 2024 that's it i'm gonna announce so guys if you're gonna be in the in the dublin area uh during the summer of 2024 look out for balloon boy the new glam band that's coming to rock your irish ears with that being said appreciate you thanks horsehair for joining us man i know you're a uh 
Insomniac, and I appreciate you. God bless you guys for being on the show. Thank you. God bless you, and I shall see you guys tomorrow. Have another comment. <laughs> Horsehair of the band, remember, touring British pop, I mean, Irish pubs, summer 2024. Don't miss it. God bless you guys. Mm -hmm.